Hey friends, Holy Weekend is coming up and I couldn't be more excited that we have one more year together to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Since last Easter, a lot of new people call Redeemer Rockwall home and we couldn't be more excited about that. But it also means that they haven't had a chance to uh, experience what it is that we do here at Redeemer Rockwall for Holy Week. And so if that's you, I just wanted to do a quick video to explain what it is that we're inviting you into with our three services that we offer and why it is that we do them the way that we do. So on Good Friday, we have our Tenebrae service. If you've never been to a Tenebrae service, it's an ancient style of service dating all the way back to the early first centuries of the church. And it's a style of service where we have seven readings from the passion story in the gospels to vividly uh, portray the suffering and the agony and the death of Jesus. And so to do that, we have readers that do a dramatic reading of those scripture passages to make it feel like we're inside the story, living it as though it happened. And as we finish each of those readings, we blow out a candle and then the sanctuary slowly descends into complete darkness. When you arrive, you'll notice that the windows are all blacked out, all in the sanctuary. And so by the time we get to that final reading, we enter into complete pitch dark. And we do that because it's a way of symbolizing one of the deepest realities of the gospel, that we were buried with Christ in his death so that we might also be raised with him in his resurrection unto new life. And so we follow Jesus into the tomb as we remember all of his suffering, his agony, and his death. And so one of the things that I, we always try to convey is why we celebrate Good Friday. You know, a lot of churches don't. Um, they just kind of want to skip to the good news. But the reason we offer the whole weekend is because you cannot have Easter without Good Friday. To celebrate a resurrection, you have to have death in order for that resurrection to even be a possibility. And so we think of a uh, way I've expressed it over the years is to think about Tenebrae like a funeral. It's why we actually encourage everyone when they come to dress as, they're go as if they're going to a funeral. Because quite frankly, we are. If you think about Jesus' death, he was abandoned. There was just a couple of people to take him off the cross and to tend to his dead body and put him in the tomb. That's hardly a funeral that is uh, worthy of the Lord of glory. And so one of the things that we do in Tenebrae is essentially giving Jesus the funeral that he deserved, a way of remembering and treasuring his life and his death and offering him the funeral that he deserved but never received. And then whenever we leave, we simply get up and everyone leaves in complete silence. There's no fellowship, no talk. We just get up and we leave to symbolize uh, the way that the disciples were scattered after Jesus was, was killed on the cross. And so we do that until, um, and then we're not brought back together again until Easter, Easter morning. But that's also a really powerful way of thinking about the rest of the weekend, that we each go our own way. It's what it says in Isaiah 53. It's also a way of us thinking about what it was like for the disciples on that dark Saturday. I mean, think about it. A week before, they rode into Jerusalem like conquering emperors, victorious in war. All the people received them. And then by the end of the week, those same people are yelling, crucify him. And they crucify and they kill Jesus. That is a complete rug pull on all of their hopes and expectations. Everything they thought was going to be happening. The kingdom was coming. They were going to be at the top of the kingdom and just ride that wave up. This was what they had waited for for centuries. And then Jesus is dead. That would have been a shell-shocking moment for them. Especially when they're all scattered and running for their lives. Probably wondering if they are going to be crucified next. That's why Peter ran whenever he was recognized by the girls in the crowd and he denied Jesus three times. And so as we think about Dark Saturday, it was the darkest day of history as the Lord of glory lied dead in the tomb. So what was that like for the disciples? What was it like with all those expectations just shattered and all that disappointment, all that grief, all of that sorrow and the devastation of it all? That's a great way for us to approach God ourselves. 
is to allow the story of the Bible to shape how we approach God. And so on that dark Saturday, that is a time for you to come here to the church. We open it up from 8 to 11 p.m. It's come and go as you please. But we invite you to come and to pray. To pray on your own, it's not corporate, but we give you a prayer guide and we go in through, or we go through the prayer guide doing just that. Asking you to reflect on the last year of your life and all of that's happened in your life. Maybe it's been a terrible year of disappointment. Maybe it's been an incredible year of hardship with your kids or at your job. Maybe life just got turned upside down in ways that you weren't expecting. We all carry grief and frustration and sorrow and Dark Saturday is a chance to bring all of that to Jesus. And that prayer guide helps you process and ask those questions to explore your own heart, to explore your own life, and to maybe start to kind of pull the cover off of those things that we want to hide and keep hidden in our lives. It's a chance to finally do business with it. So what are all those areas in your life that you just want Jesus to come and breathe new life into? Well, that's what we hope you work through. That's what we hope you pray through. And so we come back, we enter into the tomb, and it's just to symbolize bringing all of that back to Jesus, into the tomb, and asking the Spirit to bring you life. And then on Sunday morning, as you come for Easter, dressed in your, your Sunday Easter best, um, you're gonna come and it's gonna be a little bit different than you expect. You're gonna walk in and it's gonna be really quiet. Rob Sheely's gonna be playing a dirge on the piano. The window black is still gonna be up. The lights are gonna be dim. And you're gonna think, what in the world is going on? Well, we start how Easter started, when Jesus was still in the grave on Easter morning. And so we enter back in into the quietness of the tomb. And then as we progress into the service, the angel comes and announces the resurrection and all the window black comes down. And we remember that a light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. I can't wait for this weekend and all that it holds for us. And if this is your first time with us, I couldn't be happier that you're here. And I can't wait to experience all of it with you. We love you and we'll see you soon.